So this morning we're going to make Grammy's famous French toast. Now, Hello, I'm Carolee. And I'm Charles. We're an old married couple who enjoys traveling, cooking, and having adventures. Together we enjoy all the wonderful things the world has to offer. Join us as we discover the, the wonder, wonder about, about us. us. Chin chin. Now, my granddaughter lives in Salem, Oregon, and she sent me a picture a couple weeks ago saying um, that she was at this restaurant that said it's world famous French toast. And when it came, she's like, oh my gosh, Grammy, it tastes just like your French toast. So now my toast, my, my French toast must be world famous. So, um, so I've taken an original recipe and modified it because you know me, I can't follow a recipe. So um, you're gonna want two bowls because we're gonna we're gonna actually dip our French toast, but we're gonna dip it a little different than you're expecting. Okay. Um, so the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and coat um, a cookie sheet because we're gonna actually, or shallow pan, whatever. We're gonna actually do our French toast in the oven instead of on a griddle or something. So that makes it really easy because then it's all ready at one time. Lots of times you have a bigger family, and if you're frying up French toast. You only have you can only do six or eight at a time and then some of the family's like well I want a two and you're like yeah but everybody's got to get one to start you know and so this way you can this way you can bake it and you can be with your family or do your other sides um, so the original recipe called for that bread that's cut thicker that um, they call that Texas toast I decided to use, and you can buy any brand, um, I do use the Texas toast and I actually use the cheese one. They have cheese, they have garlic, they have different flavors. Um, so this is more like, um, this is thicker like, like, um, you know, it's more, it's round, it's not a square like those others. So then, um, then it's, so we're gonna start off with, um, in one bowl we're gonna put in um, the eggs and the milk. So we're gonna go with, um, we're gonna um, go with two eggs. And these shells have been shattering, so that's why I did this in another bowl and I should have. So in one bowl, we're gonna put in um, two eggs and a half a cup of milk. And um, you, everybody's used to, the. you're gonna batter your French toast with, with an egg batter. Um, so this part's not any different, really. And you can use any kind of milk. You can use oat milk or you know, 1%, 2%, whatever you, whatever your family normally drinks or you like to buy. And you can just use a regular fork to whip this up. All you're really doing is mixing it together. And sometimes you have to kind of poke the yolk to break and see there's a little clump of, of egg white here. And so you just want to make sure that's just kind of blended. And then the original recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. That's a lot of salt. So I'm just gonna put in a couple of grinds. We're not, we're not real big salt eaters, so I'm just gonna put in a couple of grinds. Okay. Then, um, oh, I vanilla extract too. And um, I like um, the Mexican vanilla extract, but you can use whatever brand you like, um, even imitation if you, want, if you like. If you're using imitation, you might wanna use just a tad bit more. So it's a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I want to get that blended in. And it's nice because these are all different colors, so you can you can see that stripey if it's not blended. Okay, so that's good. And then this is what's this is where it comes in unusual. This is actually Kellogg's cornflakes. You don't have to use Kellogg's brand, but it used to be, and I think you've probably seen this in one of my other recipes. You, they, you couldn't buy them crumbled, so you, I poured them in a Ziploc bag and then ran them over with a rolling pin. Now you can actually buy them crumbled, and so it's really cool. Um, and I, we need a cup of these, and it doesn't matter if you're gonna a little extra because this isn't really baking. But it's so cool that you can buy these already crumbled now instead of smashing them. And look, they look more like little tiny flakes instead of crumbled. So you're gonna get a little bit better consistency here too. Okay, um, and so then, so now we're going to take our bread, and this is right out of the freezer, okay. And like I said, I, we got the cheese one, so we get, see it has cheese on one side and not on the other. So if you're cooking these, just as Texas toast, a lot of Texas toast, they only really cook on one side. So you don't have to worry about that cheese on melting, or you can do it in the oven. So we're gonna go ahead and dip this in the egg batter. 
And that's normally all you do for, for French toast, right? Well, we're gonna then put them also in this in, in corn with put these cornflakes on them. And you want to make sure you get a nice coverage. You might want to pat them down a little bit. Then you're gonna put them on your um, your cookie sheet that you've already or your shallow pan. Now, um, you're, you're, we may have some egg batter left. Don't throw that away. A lot of people, oh, we're done with that. It's not really contaminated because you washed your hands ahead of time and the bread's all clean. So you can just fry that little bit up and have um, scrambled eggs. Um, if, if you're like, well, that's not enough scrambled eggs for the family, you can save it and scramble it up for another day or mix it in with your other eggs if you're serving eggs. It's gonna have a little a little um, cereal in there because you, you've got it on your fingers. So Charles, you've had this French toast before. What do you think about it? I mean, this is one of my favorite French toasts because uh, it's got that, it's crunchy, and it's, but it still has that, that custardy inside, but it's got, it's, I mean, it's just super crunch. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I love about it. And it's so simple. Uh, you don't have to do it on the griddle. A lot of times, a lot of times you're like, oh darn, my griddle's not hot all the way. Or, um, you know, it's kind of like that first batch of pancakes that doesn't come out. And you, um, so see, you do have, you have quite a bit of egg mixture left. I mean, so if we were to measure this, I think this is, because remember we put in the milk also. So look, we almost have, we put in a half a cup of milk and two eggs. So this is the equivalent of about, um, I think it's a quarter of a cup per egg. So that's the equivalent of two eggs, which is kind of funny because we started with two eggs in the milk. But so you can scramble that up um, and and for yourself, or, or if you're having scrambled eggs with this, just add this to the scrambled eggs. So then this is gonna go in the oven. I've preheated the oven to 450. And then this is gonna go in the oven. And it goes in the oven, um, I wanna double check. I think it's about 30 minutes. Oh, only 10 minutes. So it goes in the oven for 10 minutes. And then when it comes out, it's ready. Now, and so you can um, use any kind of syrup you like. We, um, I, I love the Knott's Berry Farm um, boysenberry syrup. So that's what I use. Um, you can use any kind of syrup you want. It's kind of, it's gonna be cr kind of crunchy on top. A little, well, it's, um, it's not crunchy, crunchy, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice crunch. So you, so you can still, yeah, but you can still spread butter on it if you wanted to, you know. But um, it's so, it's so like Charles says, it's so creamy and everything on the inside. And, and particularly because I usually use the cheese flavored, I think, um, you don't usually use, need to add much butter. So in a few minutes, we'll take it out of the oven. So um, you can, we talked about buttering your, your, um, your French toast. You can either put on a quarter of a cup of butter and drizzle it on before you bake it, or I'm gonna do it after I bake it because I kind of like that creamy buttery thing. So it's a quarter of a cup. So rather you have the long cubes like this or the shorter things, it's a half a cube, okay? So sometimes these, these measurements on here get off center. So like here, you can't even re begin to read the beginning one. And so if you're, if you're doing this, you're gonna have to adjust that a little bit. But it's always just a half a cube, okay, for a quarter of a cup. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit because the, the markings are wrong. And then um, I, I tell you before, I, I have different, I have a special container that I melt my butter in. Oops, there. Um, I, this time I'm just going to use this measuring cup. And if you take out, if you take your butter out ahead of time, then it's going to be a little softer. It's going to be room temperature, and it won't quite, quite take quite so long in the microwave. So this has been out for just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. I think because it's a quarter of a cup, I'm going to do 40 seconds. No, that's going to be way too long. We're all at 20, huh, Charles? That's like a 30. Yeah. <laughs> so, so our timer went off for our French toast. So let's go ahead and check it. There's Janie going. Ooh, yummy. Oops, sorry. 
So we got some of that crispiness on the top because remember these were cheese um, flavored. So some of that um, that extra um, crispy brown part is the, um, the cheese and such coming up. So um, I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and just sprinkle this on. This is easier, like I said, you could do this before it bakes or when it comes out. And you just wanna, if nobody, if somebody doesn't want butter, then just don't put it on there. But this is a little bit easier than trying to spread butter on. Oops, that piece must be mine. <laughs> and so um, there is Grammy's world famous French toast and the recipe will follow and I'll give you um, the recipe and then I'll make comments about where I made some changes. Have a great day, enjoy. Bon appetit.